joy to be living in such a beautiful place. It's a joy to share the love. It's a joy to share the peace with my brothers in harmony. So let the music shine from within. Let your music out from within. It's a joy to share the love. Such a joy to share the peace. Glory to the Almighty. Yeah, man. Blessings and welcome forward to Reasonings right here at the Tree of Life. I'm your host, the Great Owl, in the presence of my co-host, Brother Raman Singh, Perfect and love. the Mystic Kush. Perfect love. Yes, sir. Perfect love. It's an awesome, hot summer day in Hamaka, Jamaica. And um, in this moment, we want to acknowledge the gifts and the talents that the Most High God has gifted us with. So today's offering, expressing the divine music within. So how do we express? How should you express? Or is there divine music within us? For real? Right? So we're gonna let Brother Singh take this expressing the divine music within. How do you express your divine music or the divine music within? Yes, sir. In our Psalms, you know, King David write many about music. Because I remember him was a harpist, you know. Ah, yes. And he can sing too, yes. you know. And he can write. Yes, yes. Poet, you know, and singer. So, he love speak about using music to glorify and worship the Father. Ah, awesome. You see me? Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, you know. That is one of the gifts of, you know, the essence of most spiritual people. Especially if you're religious, right? You're going to be like singing a song. It's like it comes into your heart and you sing it. Most of the, the, the great singers would say in our contemporary sense, they started out in church. <laughs> and also, um, you know, all their inspiration comes from God, right? And you have some in the, also the opposite consciousness would say it comes through the, the internal day of man, right? The guiding principle of their inspiration. Not so close it sounds to demon. True. But anyway, we're talking about, you know, divine music. So I think most people when they come into some kind of a deeper experience of life, I think you express it musically. I just think it's natural that you'd want to sing in high keys and notes and tonalities just from the heart's joy. Notice I didn't say anything technical like keys and chords for the sake of the conventional professional you know music arrangement the pentatonic scale and all these things right notice I, it's, it's nothing to do with that it's the feeling of the soul with an emotivity and so you naturally sing from this exuberant state in high pitched tones and if you're wholly filled you're going to even have physical movements because it's vibration it's a syncopation of everything right and so I think we all are born into this music and I'll even go further, I would say we are all born from this music. I would go further in saying that 432 megahertz is not a subjective but a literal measurable frequency of the most harmonization that literally make people feel like in sync with the very motion of breathing which is calculated at 60 megahertz, you know, 60 um, beats per second, the measure of the pulse, right? It's music, so I'm saying that we are a living song. From your breathing, you're a living song. And sometimes we are not playing the right keys, the right chords, because we're not being ourselves. So we are learning the mechanical that we call the 440 keys and the 440 chords, 440 megahertz, and its derivative, right? Which gives you a sort of an artificial. And we're not gonna say it's not harmonious to a degree, and we're not gonna say it's not melodious, but it's a, like a, a projected melodious versus an attractive melodious. It's like one is, is the very essence of your breathing and one is a trained pattern of breathing. So one is just natural. So it's natural for us to just sing, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, right? Because once you're feeling that God frequency in you through temperance, good behavior, discipline, you're going to express it creatively beyond whether you're 
tone deaf or not. It's, it, it's emotional. People who are, who are said to stutter or sometimes have a stomach problem, a voice card problem, they, they cannot speak clearly. You know, there's a short circuit in, in, in terms of the vocal tonations, right? But when they sing, there's, there's no um, stuttering, there's no short circuitry. This is a pure, smooth um, um, vocal um, um, tonality. My sister stutters and she sings beautifully. <laughs> Mr. Kush. Uh, the divine expression of music is all the true self expression of music is based on the fundamental of your heart. You know, everybody is a uh, motion of the musical universal world itself from your bond, you know. How the kind based on awareness of being present around the talent at birth, being talent and acknowledging hearing what is within you, mm -hmm. acknowledging the mode and the rhythm of nature, giving the frequency the frequency to be the rhythm of your own motion that is expressed itself through life, you know. So those artists was a little the modern time and nowadays. Those are artificial artists, that are mechanical artists, or not from nature artists, have not discovered the earth music of nature and nurturing the information, how it feels, the motion, how to express itself without thought, without being teaching how to express, but express it by feeling so that it can make the whole world cry, you know? Based on the earth frequency, tell you how what it feels, the rhythm, you know what I mean? So that's how you get the spiritual power of time, you know, of inner ancestry, of the earth power, of language, you know. That's how the language of the voice in the music come from our people, is our heart, you know, our mm -hmm. earth, you know what I mean? So first you have to say darling to order to know what's down. Because when you be darling, you can know what it's down, that it down create thought that it's inside of you, you know. That sound becomes invisible into the darling voice that create the rhythm of the sound based on the outer environment and the inner environment based on our body, barrel rhythm to barrel energy to nature that create the rhythm of music. And you have to listen to all animal kingdom, how they communicate through their feeling to create that musical communication that needs to give that vibration, that, that non-noise, it's not a noise, it's a vibration it's through a musical harmony without feeling noise in nature. Because in town it can be a lot of noise, don't it? It needs to be quiet. Like, it's like musical feeling. It's like distortions mm -hmm. are noise. Harmonies is music. So making sounds come to a harmonization, a unity of frequency. So you have the different tonalities, the different pitches in your voice, the inflections and intonations that you know you, your your chords are make up from the different range and spectrum of the of the vibrations, right? So you can string together in the essence of one chord, three different pitches, a high, a mid, and a low. So on the high pitch, you are carrying a, a certain level of frequency coming off the 432, more going towards the 440, right? In a high resonance, you have a mid-range pitch there, somewhere between um, the closer to like 434 um, going up within that rims right there, that would give you something of a like a the mid guardian kind of sense in the middle kind of frequency and then you have like the the, the base frequency right the low frequency of the cosmos like the actual groundation which is the deep in the 432 right which syncopates syncopates the flower of life the seed of life the fruits of life like what bob says we often speak about light bands right which is the 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 the, the electromagnetic bands right um the electrotonal, like the photon bands, which is the light bands, right? But we often don't speak about the electrotonal bands, right? Which is that vibration of sound, vestibular, through the ear, brings what we call balance in your bipedal. So that means that it's because you can hear and somehow process the vibration of sound that there is proper equilibrium. People who do not hear so well or do not hear at all tends to have motor um, dysfunctions that is not a biological motor dysfunction but a psychic a vibrational one where the 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 spatial movements are indifferent right 
because how sound is activated within their frequency is different, right? It's because the auditory nerve is blocked, right? So they would have to feel it. And you notice their body movements under the musical vibration. They're vibrating on, the dance, on, the movement, on whatever right. the frequency of the music is. Mm -hmm. But me and you can hear it and tap in a sequential order, right? On the pentatonic, on the, the, the regular, um, do me for solati scale, whatever, I don't remember what they call that scale, whatever that scale is, right? Yeah, we, we, can, we can sing along, we can notate, we can have a notation of that sound, right? Of the different tonal pitches, and we can syncopate it, and then we have what is called the structure of the music as we know it professionally. Those uh, who can master the mathematics of it become like notary to like great um, composition and arrangement. But then music to us in the West is mostly known from vocal prowess because people don't remember most of the people who put the sound frequency together to dictate how the words would, would, would reach you because the majority of the sound frequency in the rhythm or the, 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 the engineer and the, the creator and the conceptualizer of the rhythm structures it is what really directs the frequency. That's why when it's 440 arranged, it tends to be a little bit different than when it's 432 because 432 is like Rasta would say one, two heartbeat or what we say at trio like the one, two heartbeat telegraphics meaning that the one, two rhythm is not just sending a vocal and emotional tonality frequency but it's sending a visual, graphic, telegraphic, tele, it's teletransmitting a graphic so what we see, what we feel, what we smell, what we taste, what we touch is being translated through the tonal frequency through the sound frequency, so music mirrors life itself that literally your behavior how, how you are when you're angry has a certain frequential um, a, a alignment right and, and sequence when you're angry over a period of time so when your breathing patterns match anger you're either losing that 432 and going to aberrated frequency it's your breathing patterns that get sharp and weird right when you're calm and you're breathing on the right sequence of the note or the note is most melodious you know why because it resonates at a higher frequency. It has more space in the bandwidth to resonate. So people might listen to the technicalities of it and think, okay, so this is just for musicians or singers or players or instruments according to the Bible. So, but no, every human does it at some degree when you're either very melancholy or very, very happy. Because those things trigger the intensity of emotions to become explicable through um, that music. And as it were, to those people who want to continue at those situations, you have to listen to 432 or 532 or higher 932 or 639, higher frequency, the AB to observe your own vibration so that you can go contour up more and free tie your own psychological buckle in other energy going mm -hmm. on the outside force because there are muted contrast and warfare against the earth to be to the heavenly being people. Mm -hmm. Because they want to create a consciousness, the diffusion on people in their mind, you see me? Mm -hmm. So we are always diffusion in a nature thinking and a harmony thinking, you see me? Mm -hmm. A way of natural how the nature speak itself, how we express itself and how we cheer itself, you see me? So they come with a distortion and a determiny with ignorance. They don't know nothing about music. They don't know nothing about expression because they have nothing about the nearest fundamental of life of expression and the true tone of the nearest and the universe itself, you know? How to make you feel happiness when you listen to nearest. The way you listen to nearest, your happiness is in order your problem gone. Yes. So it's creating a music or musical nearest to classical rhythm to make you feel that happiness in tune, you know? It's like playing your own, playing, playing the harmonious cards that you're being, brother, Mystic Kush. Well, thing is like playing the harmonious cards of your own being is breathing properly, thinking clearly and being in tune with your emotions. Because if you hurt when there is hurtful experiences, if you laugh when there is joyful experiences, if you are melancholy when there are sad and depressive experiences, then believe me, you can sing, you can express. The reason why some people do not think their natural gift of music is worthy to become a professional talent is because they are not up to share their emotions with a lot of people because they might not know how to differentiate the emotional expression in the moment from the constancy of their life. When you're a professional, I've been doing it for, for years on stage and I, I know that I have to write from my, hallelujah, from from my earth 
as well as my joyful, as well as my confusing experience. I know if I want my poem, my song to connect to somebody, I have to be honest. So if I'm ignorant on something, me pretending to be smart and it will not convey the true message. So I have to be honest. So I always share my, hey, holy Baba. I always, holy, holy. I always share the music that is honest to me. Right? And that's how I have been able to translate and communicate. Now, other people have what, what I was saying at the studio, because we are coming from the studio today currently, right? Yourself and I was in the studio, Kafari more, you know, you know, Trial Life representing. And what I was saying to, to one of the, the artists at the studio is, is that there's a technicality of music. Where some people are so technical in the understanding that they fit the music to its perfect groove and its perfect outcome by the auditory externalization of the sound. How it feels when you're hearing it. How you expect others to move to it. Does it move the internal organs, the biology, to, to, to snap your finger along or tap along? So some people look at the technicals of it to get that effect. And so they will constantly go and do the track over and over. The, the producer will tweak the sound. But I am the opposite, right? I am a person where any fixing would have to be in the emotions. And anytime the emotion and the spirit haba, is right, then I am not so heavily concerned. Because I know people listen to my music and say, I know he could have said this line better, but over the years, me listening to music, brother sing, Mr. Kush, I learned one thing. What moves me is not just this crispness of artifice, the sound that is so crisp, but what substance does it have? I have often and always more preferred the sounds with substance that bear depths of the logos, of the personality, than just the mechanical sound. You know why? Because I can hear 20 artists hit the same note on the same sequence to evoke the same feelings. It's not special. Hey, it's not special. Hallelujah. Special is when you step into the studio today and you sing the way you sing, you chant the way you chant, and you find those notes on your inflection and your intonation, right? On your ad lib, right? On your solid holding of that, that, that note. That's what's beautiful. What I say. You know what the one thing I'm going to add a point to? They don't add it to have the uh, in musical in instrument mm -hmm. and spend time up the mountain, spend time with the birds and the animals, spend time 24 7 with the self play instrument. Mm -hmm. You wait till how many birds and animals come close to you and listen to you. True, and I've, I've nine time, yeah. they put it to sleep. My God, and all listen to you, they will follow you every time you move. Because you're the frequent, you're kind of intimate or your mentor. But animals and music, they're in love. So when you would mute it, it helps the animals. The right back. frequency of the music. Right frequency. Right. Right. I mean, it's true. We have to make I that know clear. people don't think about animals with music. Continue. Because the, the, before Moto Brothers sing, the musical experiment was done with sound frequency. And so they, they, they played the classical music for a fledgling plant, a, a fresh born ah. fledgling plant, and they played hard heavy metal. And the frequency of the hard heavy metal literally killed hey, the plant, it killed the plant. The classical 432 closer to that frequency was more to the natural patterns of its circadian, of its biorhythms, as Bob mentioned, right? And so it grew more. It grew more and certain musical um, formations caused a more harmonizing sound, a more growth-orienting sound, like literally causing more oxygenation in, 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 in the plants around. Just like the water crystal um, spoken word um, um, manifestations mm -hmm. where you spoke the frequency. And it, when they did the, the water tonality experiment, the Japanese experiment, I don't remember the name of the professor, one of the clear things, and we just, we just quote these things in the modern, because they're not, they're not any kind of substantiation to me, they are correlatives, and we already knew this, hey. So when with the sound frequency spoke positive things into the water, the formation of the water molecular structure was far more diverse and intricate and deeply dimensional to its whole um, essence. However, when negative things were spoken, it barely had any uniqueness to its formation. Meaning, words of higher vibrational quality that is often stored through the tonality or expressed through the tonality does have manifest value. That it can lift the frequency up, if it's harmonious, or take the frequency down. And it's the same frequency when you think about it. That if a person be in good spirits and then prepare a meal. Like that harmonization, there's a loving, healthier taste. Even to the taste and scent 
will come out of that meat from awful tori to the very essence of taste will change based upon how much joy is expressed in the individual who is preparing it likewise the sorrow likewise the depressiveness does come out in the taste of the food so music going into food hey is essence of having mood i always say to people look at the the inverse quaila of the word mood is doom right <laughs> so mood and doom is is is, is, is yeah, inverse of, it, of itself like and people might say that the meaning is not um um, um sacrosanct but the essence of it is that you can say whatever you want the essence of language it's not just linear language doesn't go just one dimension in its etymology in its denotation in its connotation it's an inference but denoted value tells us that language has structural value and matrices as well as it has a psychological structure to it it's not just a uh, infomural ideology language and sound is organized and structured from actual from real things right? right so when you have mood a mood determines the outcome of the behaviors right and doom is a negative prognosis on behaviors and thought processes the negative uh, the, the, the proclivity towards negative thinking the compunction towards negative thinking is it's it doom doom and gloom so music conveys a literal substantive denotive meaning as well as connotative impress impressionable vibration i mean like we can sing philosophies and, and music we can sing ideologies right and the ideologies can lift the spirit again if they are in sync with what is loving or what is worthwhile and happiness included or they can sync us based upon how debasing they are so you have some music that people categorize as secular or non-secular i'm not necessarily categorizing music as secular or non-secular I'm categorizing music as healthy and unhealthy. Yes, sir. Yeah, because in the end of the day, you know, you have a lot of yeah, people in the system are dying up to the systematic music, mm -hmm. you know, drawing the harmony and dark eyes music, the create dysfunctional in the mind, you know, because of the DNA resonates in our biological earth frequency that we connect to the astral. Yes, so, hey. so we do why most of the artists are signing up, they get a lot of money and they don't want to tell the people what they do, the music industry, or how they reverse the instrument down to make your body to be reversed backward in your brain and make your brain become... Reverse engineered. Right. So Programs, yeah. what they do is they use words and sound to make it dumber in a backward thing, you know? And there's a different energy that pumps along the subconscious to call repetitive. So the repetition in your brain and the subconscious cause you to in your brain to record it and it could repeat all day in your brain. So those people who are not in the subconscious world who are not aware these things play out in your head every day, it means it's going in your body to able to control your physiology and your psychological mood swing yes. and it make it depolar. Yeah. and control your polar energy. and bipolar too bipolar because bipolar what is both depolar. is depolarization yeah, meaning depolarization you lose bipolar. the harmony and bipolarization your, your short circuiting flipping between the poles yeah and those are spells incantations curses in the music brother sing yes yeah, sir so we just want to add to uh, like what brother bob did i say earlier brother mystic kush um that nature is actually praising the lord mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have our next verse in the Bible, the same Psalms, you know? Yes. Praise the Lord, sun and moon. Yes. Praise the Lord, all the angels. Hallelujah. So the angel, them, sun Holy. and moon, stars. Holy. The earth, the, the earth itself. Can I remember say, when the blood they spill upon the earth? Yes. The earth cry out. Give testimony unto, yeah, the, the blood of Abel. Or the you see me? The blood cry out, but yes. the earth feel it. Yes. You see me? When Christ dead upon the cross, the earth shook. Mahati. You see me? Habba. So it's a living, everything is alive. Yes. You see me? A living song. And them are praise the Lord. Yes. Because at the, the Father created them. Yes, Abba. If I never for the Father, them would exist. There wouldn't be this living song. You see me? So the Father is the music that's truly playing then. You could True. Say that. Yeah, man. Because even David, he must say, oh, Remember harpy music? Yeah, you ten know how strings, harp right? sounds beautiful. Instrument of ten strings. You see me? It's a beautiful sounding instrument. Yeah. You know, that's why you must say, praise the Lord upon organs. Yes. 
string instruments, yes. cymbals, yes. trumpets. Loud sounding cymbals. You see me? Yes. Yes, I. All the different frequency spectrum, because all of them harmonize. As, as, as Mr. Kush said, and you um, alluded to, and I'm um, impressed more to point forward, the musical orchestration, because we are a living song. And some of us aren't playing our right cards and keys, hence we are not in harmonization of the actual nature of being. That being said, the entire cosmos, the living cosmos, playing this song on the 432, the flower of life, fruit of life, the very essence of the breath of life, is the spirit of the immortal through Christ Jesus in Yahshua Mashiach, in the immortal presence, which come unto man, yeah, in thought and woman, in thought and frequency, experience and beliefs, right, and manifest as way of life, lifestyle, outcomes, family, community, all these things resonate on our frequency. Music is the frequency that brings harmony and value to all of that. Because in a song, you don't have to curse your neighbor or bring chiding onto your neighbor. You can suggest solutions for the disparities of lack of understanding. You can, in your music, put a declaration of self-introspection. You can question the statements and standards of what is applicable. You can make inferences as to your hurt and your pain as well as actual statements on your hurts and your pain and your suffering individually, collectively, even as a spiritual movement, a religious movement, a political movement, or as a nation of aboriginals, or as the very divergent nature of life itself. All the earth sings this one song, the orchestration of life. Whether you're in the woodwinds, whether you're in the strings, whether you're in the vocals, whether you are the, the, the bass tones, you know, whether you are the treble, you know, whether you are the mid, however it is on the sound system, beatboxing on the chest, in the vocal intonation, however music is, music is the very essence, the one to life itself. The Most High God is the orchestra and the very creator of the very essence and the sound. The wave, the particle, the manifestations of the light and the shadow, the rhythm, the timing, yeah, that's what we're talking about now, that sound. And the divine music now, it not only benefits people, hey. you see me, self and people, it benefits the grounds as well. Yes. That's why you can make a ground holy, How about? you see me. You go there and chant up some proper psalms and chant out of your heart to the Most High and have intention to bless the ground as well. Hallelujah. You know? Speak it into being Hallelujah. through faith. Yes. And you bless up the grounds. You see me? Yes. And the music type is to communicate to the universe and all the stars and all the different dimensions of life, you know? And the music type is to call out and just to communicate the distance, you know? If you see what's going on in the future and what they're doing, what they're born in that generation, you see me? And the music call out the spirit, which is a non visible tone. That the unseen spirit can hear the music more than what is the physical. Yes. Like you work with your vibration. A tone is the speed of light, you know. Yes. Traveling so, in an invisible or non invisible, you see me? So, yeah, man. So, until next time. We are imploring you to just allow that divine music to flow from within the, 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 the natural spectrum of your individual soul-filled, soul-filling experience. Pour it out in emotionality, yeah, in spirituality, in adoration to Yeshua Mashiach, in adoration, hallelujah, to the Most High God, to Habba, to Vine Father, to Saba. Speak this in alignment yeah, to your brother, to your sister, in your own small corner, in your own prior kingdom. Pray up your song of protection. Pray up your song of, 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 of psalms of prayer and healing and holy protection. Chant up a psalm. Chant a psalm for righteousness. Chant a psalm for love. Chant a psalm for your family, for your bloodline, for your nation. Chant a psalm. Sing a song for love and healing mercy. So until next time, this has been a great hour. Reasonings right here at the Chair Life. In the presence of my co-host, Brother Raman Singh and the Mystic Kush. What an everlasting song. Perfect love. Perfect love. Perfect love. Perfect love. Perfect your love. Perfect love in Christ.
Yeah. <laughs> 